Hello, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today I want to share with you my list of the top five Excel mistakes I personally saw from colleagues and customers I supported as a freelancer. Number one, don't work too hard. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but a lot of people try to solve their problems on their own. This is a huge mistake. If you seem to be working too hard on something, try searching for it. Simply write in Google how to build a pivot table, how to solve this problem, how to whatever. If you can't find it on Google, you can just create a post on many of the Excel forums like the Reddit Excel um, subreddit. Mr. Excel has a great forum. Uh, Chandu, a lot of sites have those. So you best search for answers and shortcuts on those uh, sources of information. That's going to save you a lot of time and effort. So that's number one. Number two, do not use numbers text in your functions. Always use parameters from cells within the sheet. For example, I could write a function called if 100 is greater than 90, then yes, otherwise no. And that's great. I, I understand what I wrote here. But I may go back to this in a few months or even share it with someone and they'll have no idea what 198 stand for. It's much better to add cells and just say, okay, let's have a cell for grade, call it 100. Let's have a cell for target, call it 98. And now let's have a new function called if grade is greater than target, then yes, otherwise no. And there you go. And now I can also change it, of course, and it's much easier to change the formula and it's much clearer. Oh, this is what you meant. So make sure you do that. It may at first seem like something difficult and time constraining to do, but in the long run, it's going to save you a lot of time. It's much quicker to change a number here than write it. Number three, avoid multi nested functions. Nested functions, if you're not familiar with that term, are basically a function within a function. So if you combine two functions, that's pretty reasonable and you could probably just still figure it out what's going on. But if you have three plus functions, it starts to become a little bit more tricky and hard to understand what's happening and takes a long time to understand. So I really recommend that once you have more than three, four functions that you want to write down, add columns, rows, break down those functions into small bytes. And if you do that, it would be much clearer for you what the goal was. But also, whenever you have any issues or outliers, you'll be able to quickly identify them and fix them. Let's take a look at the example I'm sharing here. So let's say you have three columns. Each has their own data. And you want some sort of nested formula. And you can see I have basically four functions here. I have the if function. I have an average a max and a min and I got some results and sure you can still kind of understand what's happening but just as an example what if you took that nested formula and broke it down to average so I'm going to pull the average of these three I'm going to pull the max and the min okay and then I'm going to have the uh, new formula if, what did I have over here? If it's greater than 5, okay, so if average is greater than 5, which I said before, don't use, <laughs> use a reference. So let's, let's do it all the way. Let's also add on top, for example, can add like a target, let's say five. And we can have a another one with 
result, say 10. So if the average is greater than the target, I'm going to use a dollar, then use the max divided by min, otherwise use this number. Okay, and I get the same result, obviously. But at least it's much clearer for me what's happening. This is easier to understand than this. And you can also hide it if you want. So you could hide it and you would get the same result. So that was tip number four. Replace nested formulas or functions with uh, with some more helping columns and rows. Number four, which I also saw a few times and I think it's worth discussing. Don't dump everything in one sheet. What I mean is, don't have a sheet which has, let's say you're managing inventory. So don't have a sheet that has your inventory, your sales, your forecasts, your price, your prices, uh, and your uh, bill of material, all right? I've got a lot of experience in the supply chain, so this is what pops up to my mind. Don't have everything in the same place. Sure, it may be easier at first to set it up because you have a unique identifier and you just go all the way to the right. It's much better and the best approach is to separate sheets based on topics. So you'd have a sheet called a sheet called uh, Bill of Material and you'd build it with a unique key like the item, the SKU. You'd have a sheet with the sales data etc etc and eventually you'd have one sheet which would be like your dashboard or your database where you would pull everything using index match or vlookup things like that or if needed some VBA coding if it's needed but you would pull everything and it would be very clear oh I need to change the bill of material I'll just go over here change the cells over here and it, the flow of information would be much better for you so this is my personal recommendation when you have a lot of data in your Excel file. Manage it, separate it. It's clear this way. Before I go to my last one, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to this channel. I'm producing new content all the time, and you should not miss out if you enjoyed it. So my last mistake that I want to highlight for you not to do is using functions instead of math symbols sorry using math symbols instead of functions so Excel has a huge library of functions that you can use to quickly calculate what you need anywhere from financial functions mathematical functions and more this if you click on this FX you can see all sorts of functions but you can also go into categories and you see I have I have you have everyone financial date math statistical a lot of functions that could help you and sometimes you are making calculations on your own with averages and sums and mathematical uh, you know plus and minuses and maybe you could do it quickly quickly with a um, with a function that exists so just a really quick and simple example of something that not everybody knows but I think even if you learned that from this video that'd be great Let's say you have two arrays or lists of numbers and you want to multiply each one by one. You want to get the result. So the hard way would just be to start typing, right? This one by this one, this one by this one, and this one by this one, which is horrible, both from typing and also from understanding what's happening. But you could use something called some product. And this sort of recommendation groups everything together because you, you could just do this and then you could, but you could have just written in Google, how do I multiple, multiply arrays or how do I multiply a lot of numbers in Excel, something like that. Eventually you would have found this function. So some product returns the sum of the products of corresponding ranges or arrays, which is exactly what you want. So we're going to mark these four, comma, these four and we get the same results. So what's what's easier to understand? Of course. What's, you know, easier to type? No question at all. All right. So those were my five top mistakes I would recommend avoiding. 
let me know what's your five top what's your top five stakes in the comments did i miss anything out leave a comment i'd love to hear your thoughts take care